Hello and welcome to another episode of me painting again. Oh yeah, we're painting again and we've got the white canvas on the go today and I've covered that canvas with some liquid white. Yeah, liquid white all over the canvas, thin even coat and don't forget if you're wondering how much liquid white you should put on, I have made a video. Um, it's a bit old now but the information's not changed. <laughs> You only use a little bit and you want to be able to see your fingerprint when you press the canvas so you can look at your finger and see your fingerprint. So anyway, on the palette we have some Prussian Blue, Alizarin Crimson, Van Dyke Brown and Burnt Sienna. And that is what we have. So let's get this going. So I'm tapping, tappy tappy tap. Tap, tap, tapping. <laughs> tapping the bristles on the paint. Getting some uh, Prussian Blue and Elizabeth Crimson. And I'm going to start by creating a bit of a sky. So this is going to be my warm spot in the sky. So I'm just doing little X's, little crisscross strokes. Nice little X's and then uh, work it down towards the base as well. So we're going to have a bit of water in there as well. So a bit more blue. Tap. Remember to tap. <laughs> Just imagine you're a tap dancer, except your shoes are the brush. <laughs> so crisscross strokes all the way around that red. There's a bit of blue in there, so it's a bit, bit darker, a bit stronger. It's all part of the illusion. Got to make it darker look. There we go. We got open a load of colour. We get a nice purple lavendery colour with this mix. So I'm just throwing it on. And because of the liquid white on there, it blends very easily. Because um, these paints are quite thick, really. Um, it's good to have that. And it just makes it easier. I've got my camera on autofocus, and the reason is I forget to set the focus. So sometimes I'd film myself and then realize it's focused for the last painting, and then uh, <laughs> it's out of focus all the way through. So I thought, nah, sod it, I'll uh, just leave it on auto and hopefully it'll work out. Seems to be holding. <laughs> Fingers crossed. So I just lobbed in some paint on the bottom part as well, where I said there was water, snow, yeah, we can have some snow, you might know. <laughs> so I did this painting quite late, um, I'd got in, felt a bit um, like I'd not done anything, you know that feeling you get when you feel like nothing's been done today? You've not done anything. You look at your day and you think, wow, I've not really done anything. I've watched a bit of TV, I've been to work. I don't feel like I've done anything. So, oh yeah, there's yellow ochre on the, on the palette. <laughs> I don't know why I forgot that. So yellow ochre and titanium white on the one inch brush. Switch to the one inch because I want to be a bit more delicate. <laughs> So starting in the middle, little strokes again, and then work out. And this blends with the crimson, and it blends with the purpley colour. You get a hair like that, <laughs> I keep blending it. <laughs> just corner the brush like that, you see that? Corner the brush and take it out, no problems. So I'm blending outwards with the dirty brush now. Don't go back into your uh, nice clean area. Make sure you wipe the brush uh, before you do that. Or clean your brush. We'll use another brush. One, one of the, uh, one of those ideas. So yeah, like I was saying, yeah, I'm cleaning it. With, I just knock out most of the paint with the paper towel. You can hit it on a Vita rack. Works just as good. So yeah, I didn't really do that much that day. Well, I didn't feel like I did. 
Um, and, and I was like, right, I need to, uh, I need to do a painting, I need to do a painting. And uh, so I felt pretty good after I did it. And, uh, and I actually, the next morning, I did another one <laughs> using leftover paint. Because if you were uh, just using a bit of white just to brighten that center, because if you want to use your leftover paint, one thing I do, um, I've tried both methods. But the first method is <laughs> I'm doing a bit of finger painting, bit of uh, paint on your finger, bit of white. I'm gonna put a little uh, sunshine in there. Wee, there's the sun. Yeah, so the first method is, say you want to, you do a painting like I did, and and then you think, oh, I want to save my paints. I want to use them tomorrow or the day after. The best way i found is to cling film your palette. <laughs> Some people put their palette in a little box and then put that in the fridge. And then... Uh, seems to prevent the oxi oxidization of the paints and uh, you can use them the next day. The other method that uh, some people use is putting it in the freezer because it freezes it and stops it from oxidizing as well and then you just put it on your palette and uh, let your paint defrost a bit. I don't really use that method that much because I've done that and uh, I've got myself in a right mess taking the paint out of the cling film <laughs> or in little pots. Uh, I've got in a mess so I tend to do the fridge idea or I just put the paint out as I use it or like I did. You know, used all the paint up, <laughs> use it the next day and use it up. So using the fan brush loading both sides just pulling down, just pulling down. Starting quite light though, because this is quite far away. We don't want to uh, put too much dark in there. White light. Thinking about where the the land goes in. Put some little trees, distant trees. I don't know how many is there, it doesn't really matter, these are background. We, we're quite happy to let them be soft and quiet. When it gets closer, then it gets a bit darker. I like this, a bit darker. So you just create your line and then corner of the brush, just tap and then press down a little bit harder The um, as you come down. So you, and, it's amazing how quick you can do these trees actually once you get practicing and get used to it and they'll come out different especially when you do it a little bit fast <laughs> you'll get all kinds of uh, different looking trees and people say to you oh what's that tree and you say uh, oh any tree you like um what trees do you like <laughs> oh you like uh I don't know what's uh, what tree. Let's have a guess. Let's let's say it's a red pine tree. <laughs> and they say, "Oh, I really like red pines." Yeah, that's a red pine. Or, oh, if it's a what if they really like Christmas trees. Yeah, that's a Christmas tree. So we'll put an extra twenty quid on this painting. We'll make make this a bit more expensive because these are the, her, <laughs> these are his favourite trees in this painting. So we've got to put the price up. <laughs> So I've made it darker. Coming forward, you see. Coming forward. This is good practice doing these trees. Even if they don't all show, it's good practice. Good practice with a fan brush. Do them all different heights as well. They're not all big, they're not all the same size. Some are small, some are taller. Have a look at nature. 
nature is your best friend. Uh, as an artist, as you are, you need to think nature is my best friend. And that's who's going to help me with my paintings. Because whenever I have a problem with a painting, whenever I think, hmm, how do I do that? I could go outside. I could get out there, have a look, take a photo, do a painting, whatever is going to help you the best. And then you can use what you've learned. A lot of people um, tend to stick to just using Google, and I think, to be honest, <laughs> it's a bit of a mistake because you should look out your window and learn a lot more. Just tappy tappy tap 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 tapping. <laughs> And then you just mosh the paint in. Make sure you the uh, canvas is on strong. If you watch my last episode, you can see what happens if you don't make sure your canvas is on strong. <laughs> so we're putting in layers of trees. And we're getting starting on light and then get darker. So now we're going a bit closer, going a bit darker. So you're getting loads of paint now, covering up some of those that I've just done. That's a shame, I really like that one behind there. <laughs> Gonna have to go on for a walk if I want to see that again. <laughs> Gonna walk into the painting and go around this tree. Oh, oh well. Another tree. You could use the number 6 fan or the number 3 fan brush. I'm using the number 3 fan brush if you're wondering. It doesn't really matter to be honest. You could do these with a 2 inch brush. <laughs> or the 1 inch brush. You tend to have to use more paint though doing it that way. But it's also uh, fun to do. The fan brush is just so perfect for this. So that's why I use it. Lots of dark. Lots of dark down that side. So we're getting closer. A bit darker. You now we're getting a bit more dark. A bit more crimson in there. In with the Prussian blue. And I thought, ooh, I've forgotten to uh, mist this up. Mist it up. Get that mist going. Soften the base where where the trees and snow. It's going to be snow in this one. You, you don't have to have it as snow. You could have uh, put grass in there. You could add it um, magical looking. It has got a magical look to this painting actually. Got sort of a fantasy look. It's because of the uh, lavender colour you see. Purple, it has that kind of uh, spiritual, magical kind of look to it. I'm always thinking about colours and what yields they have that go along with it. Also, purple is quite a royal colour as well, isn't it? Purple and gold. So I'm thinking about the land, how it comes down into the water and this is actually based on a place that I know <laughs> and I used to walk my dog. Nice uh, area to walk. I actually uh, I've been thinking about doing a wood painting. It's full a real deep woods where you get some sunlight poking through. And I thought to myself, I can't quite remember how that looks again. <laughs> so I'll go for a walk and make some notes. So I did. Went went into the forest. I've got to take my own advice. <laughs> so I went into the forest, had a look, 
stood there for a few moments to take it in. I took a few pictures actually. Made a couple of sketches and I've got an idea. Coming soon. <laughs> so I'm grabbing some titanium white. Look, titanium white with the fan brush. Quite a lot of paint. I put a little bit of liquid white in there to make it thin. Just so it'll sit on top of this other paint. Bit of yellow ochre, titanium white. Thinking about the snow. So maybe there's some snow there. And think about where the light's gonna hit as well. It's gonna, it's gonna the light's gonna hit the snow in some places. And let it pick up the undercolour and it gets a bit darker. We're okay with that. We want that to happen really. <laughs> and then some areas we can leave a lot thicker, a bit brighter. And then it creates layers. It's all a game really, game of layers. Thinking about some areas just darker and lighter. So I'm pulling down there, pulling some of the paint down. And that's gonna be water. And then lightly just go across. Pull it down. And then go across. You can decide where you want your water, whether you want it to be really narrow where the sun is or really wide. Maybe there's a lake, maybe there's a bridge down there. There's so many things you could do. Um, you think about it, whatever you want to do. If you want it to be rough water or calm water, or maybe you like this and you want to do something similar. So I'm just spreading the snow out. Remember, it's not paint, it's snow. <laughs> we have to think in terms of paint. No, <laughs> that's wrong. You have to think in terms of what it is. Snow. I tried. I tried to think like that and try and tell myself that it's not. I'm just wiggling the brush there, trying to tell myself I'm creating something rather than just chucking paint on a canvas. <laughs> I'm actually creating something. I'm putting snow down. being creative leave some of these brush strokes as well get that painterly look I like that and then, uh, I know some some painters that can paint realism purposely do that because they want it to look painterly <laughs> Big trees. Just loading my brush, crimson, push and blue. And just pull down, create a tree. And we can uh, we can play around a bit. We can uh, we can wind up the art critics when we do this. It's like two trees. Two trees that side, <laughs> and then we can do two trees the other side, just to wind up the art critics. They always think there should be one or three, or there should always be an odd number. So if you put even numbers in, they they'll look at your painting and if they're a bit <laughs> art criticy, they'll go, "Oh, there should really only be one tree there." <laughs> Always amuses me. Because you got to think in nature, all kinds of things happen. 
and I get four trees all in a line. <laughs> and I'll say, oh, well, three will look better, it will look more artistic. It might be right. I'm not sure, though. I quite like these two twos. Two sets of two. So I'm grabbing some paint with my um, bent white liner brush <laughs> and I've got a bit of linseed oil in there to make it a bit thinner so I can uh, nicely wiggle out some branches out of the tree. Some people uh, have asked me should you wiggle them out from the tree out or from the outside in and I can tell you <laughs> I do both look I'm wiggling inwards I'm doing them all inwards now I did a few outwards as well earlier I think it depends how good your brush is <laughs> Because that, that line of brush is awful, so I find I have to pull it in, because if I push it out, it doesn't work as well. It's a bit of a bad liner. So make sure your line of brush is better than mine. <laughs> I have got another one, but it's also partially broken. Might have to splash it out. So I'm putting some more branches on this side. Make some better, put in a few branches on the, these details and make them a lot more better, a lot more better, a lot more interesting. And they're all kinds of wiggly shapes. Again, have a look at some trees. Look at their branches. They can go all over the place. Now in, in the winter, it's uh, quite interesting being when you go in the woods because you can see through. <laughs> I was like, whoa, you can see right through. Because there's no leaves anymore. And I'm just, uh, I wanted to pull some of the shadow across. So what I was doing is just pulling some of the tree colour down. Didn't quite get enough. So I was thinking, oh, what am I going to do? Oh, I know. I'll just pick up some paint. Think of the angle of the uh, shadow and where the sun is. And just pull it into it. You know, the only problem is when you do that is it takes away some of the texture of the uh, paint. So, I do do it in a minute and I knock that back in. <laughs> but I thought I'll lighten up a few areas around the shadow just to make it a bit more um, solid. So, yeah, I just created a bit of a curve there in the shadow. <laughs> I'm trying to work out how I can keep it textured so it doesn't look like a line that's been pulled out. <laughs> so I'm just picking out some light areas as well. Anywhere that I think the sun would hit more, I'm like, hmm, I'll just put another bit of light in there. Bit more snow. realized that the uh, the trees would probably cast a, sh a bit of a shadow as well so I put a bit more dark in with that snow there and then a bit of light on the outside just to create that contrast I 
I'm, I'm really enjoying this painting actually. When I was doing it, I was enjoying it. <laughs> it's a good one. Definitely a good one to have a go at. Even if, even if you've never painted before, this one is a good one to have a go at. Dipping into some liquid white on the knife. Liquid white. I'm using a detail knife. I'm just going to flatten it out. Put a little bit of colour in with it. And then cut it so you have knife on top. Why? <laughs> you have paint on top of the knife, not knife on top of the knife. And then you can cut it into the uh, canvas. Create like a. Uh, a bit of a water line. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting in the top part of the knife. Can't see it very well in the, uh, in the camera. That's the best probably angle. <laughs> can just about see what I'm doing. Just cutting it in. And I'm trying to stay flat as well. Thinking flat strokes, flat strokes. And then the, where the uh, sun hits the water, maybe there's a few light blobs in there. You could take that a bit further, actually. You could put in a bit of impasto yellow the same sunlight and put it into the uh, water. You can even darken the water to make that light a bit stronger. So I'm just softening some areas I didn't really like the way it was. I'm just pulling out some of the ones that I've blobbed too much paint on. <laughs> you could say I'm fixing things. <laughs> I uh, always sit back and I always have a look and and I think, hmm, I'm not quite sure about that. I think I need to uh, fix that. <laughs> now um, using some titanium white, I'm gonna uh, put in some snow. So I've got a little bit of uh, bluey, purpley colour on, on my brush already and there's a bit of yellow ochre. So the actual white is not pure white. It's uh, it's got a little bit of all sorts in there. <laughs> so I'm just tapping tapping in some nice snow. The snow hits some of these leaves. This tree's got a few leaves on. And I'm gonna put some snow on it. Or maybe the leaves are white. Maybe it's a magic tree. <laughs> no, I think I prefer the snow idea. <laughs> it's quite light and airy doing that. You get a nice airy light kind of feel. So just think about the way leaves are and branches and wherever you feel maybe there should be some leaves be okay but try not to overdo it, don't overdo it because if you flood that full of leaves you can't see through it and the effect gets lost a bit so I thought oh, it would be quite good to have a few bushy type things in the in the snow um, Thinking texture, I thought it looked a bit too flat. And when I've been in the uh, the woods, there's all sorts of undergrowth and things um, that's got snow on it. And unless it's a really deep snowfall, I tend to get things like this. I'm just pushing into the paint, pushing the paint in, get a bit of texture.
mainly in the foreground. You'd see a little bit more in the foreground. But in the background, it's okay that it's just smooth. And then I thought, oh, I need to do the same in the shadow area, because otherwise the shadow area looks a bit weird. <laughs> looks a bit flat, like someone's stood on it and skidded a bit. <laughs> Oh, I'll put a few little sticks and twigs in there as well using the uh, liner brush a bit of white you can do all kinds of little details when you have uh, a lot of time and to sit back and have a look over and over you can think about where you want your little details and I thought hmm there might be a bit of light hitting that tree and actually that was a good call because when I was out walking exactly that happens it does hit the side of the tree you get like a, a bit of light I was adding a bit more water line. <laughs> I wonder why I was doing that. Or was I smudging it? Oh, I was creating the light in places. <laughs> I'm messing around. I'm looking at little bits and thinking, oh, what if I did that? What if I did that? But to be honest, I could have just left it. I always get to that stage of my painting where I think, hmm, I could just do a little bit there, a little bit there, just do that bit. And, uh, and I realise I need to have a bit of a uh, texture in that, so it's shadow still, but not flat. But yeah, so there we go. That's the finished painting. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, maybe you'll uh, have a go at this one. And thanks very much for watching. And uh, yeah, this is it. It's a good one. I really like this one, actually. And hopefully you'll enjoy it. And hopefully you will enjoy the next one too. So thanks very much for watching. And I'll see you at another one. Cheers. Bye.